Hey guys, um, I'm going to make this one short because I've kind of pressed for time a little bit this morning because, you know, some of my poor management, I overslept, honestly, but I got to get this out. I'm going to put some more out this afternoon after three, but I got to get this out this morning because of the imperativeness of the timing. Put a message out a couple days ago about we missed the time, the date, one to six is the eighth. Something's transpiring in the spirit, guys. It's a spiritual shift taking place. I don't know the exact details of it. I just know that God's on the move at something. <clears throat> so here it is. Here's the scriptures. And then something we should have already been doing. The scriptures are Philippians 2, 1 through 8. Ephesians 2, 1 through 8. And Colossians 2, 1 through 8. Read them, guys, because it's imperative for this time. Sorry, I had a little bit of my breakfast and my donuts left. Colossians, actually. I'd have shared them with you, but you weren't here. But the um, imperativeness of it is, is something we should have been doing a long time ago, guys. It's that 5 a.m. prayer because... I was watching, you know, and I turned off the news. I haven't had it in two years. Uh, so I can be a little more selective because I caught myself in that trap of watching it and saying, oh, yeah, I'm, you know, the spirit of discernment, da da da, blah, blah, blah. But I was watching trash. Pretty much. Now it's really trashy. It's to pollute your mind, to destroy your mind, to get you get us focused off of what's going on in the spirit. Now what's going on in the, you know, instead we're focused on the natural. We should have been praying, guys. That message had been out since nine months ago. It's not me. I'm not saying that. There's other people saying the same thing. But yesterday I was watching on YouTube different things and everybody's panicked and they're cutting off phones and they're, you know, I get it. Other people are saying, no, no, it wasn't. It's just a mob and the side saying, you know, there shouldn't be sides anyhow, but everybody. A lot of preachers that I have watched a few times on, on YouTube and, and commented on even. And everybody's looking like they're panicked and frantic a little bit. Like, why? Why now? Because that's what the Bible says. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. He's been, God's been saying for a while, can you hear me now? I'm going to say some stuff that may seem a little brass but it's needed i'm not that not that preacher but at the same time i've got to get it out guys there's a message i got out that no not that many people everybody wants to form warm fuzzy feeling messages but these are all good messages too i put out a message one virus took out the church guys we were disconnected and i sent it to some really really holy people that are good, solid Christians. Been doing it for over probably 50 years. Very, very established in their churches and just solid. I would trust them with my life. And then we've known one of them for 30 some years plus. <clears throat> I would consider them past good friends. But I said it to more than one. And when I said it to them, they took a when I said, but all you have to do is look around, guys. I'm old school. The proof is in the pudding. Look what we let slide in, sin. The lies, the deceit. Started with the COVID garbage. And if you say that, you could get banned, thrown out, kicked off, whatever. Don't care anymore. I just don't. Man, guys, why does somebody have to beat up a Walmart guy? creator over a mask and the state cop loses his job because he won't wear one come on guys like i said we should have been praying a long long time ago how did all this usher in it's just been boom 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 more and more and more and more and that's what the enemy does he's never satisfied David Wilkerson said a long time ago, he said the gay movement was a militant movement. 
Look at it now. The abortion industry is a militant movement because their their main focus is the money. They don't care. They do sell baby parts, guys. Honestly, let's just be let's just get down to the brass tacks of this. This is a rubber meets the road message. Cut all the garbage out. Get all this pollution out. All these things that are plaguing our mind. And read those scriptures because it's talking about the mind of Christ. There's some really good stuff in there, guys. But it's time for us to repent as a nation. Because it is about life and death. It's about the life we take of the newborn and it's about the life of the born. Man, we got the whole spectrum covered, guys. I live in a major city. They're tearing down tent cities, kicking people out. If you're not there, your, your stuff gets trashed, thrown away. What little bit you, you had, no dignity, no nothing. Yeah, I get it. They made some mistakes, okay? I'm not just focusing on the homeless people. But now it's even normal people or seemingly normal people, business owners and small businesses. And, man, people are living... I'm not going to say who. I was at a major retailer that I used to work at in the, in the late 90s. Home Improvement Retailer. I will say that. I saw a friend of mine that I've worked with. Kind of a big, stocky guy, you know, not... He, he, but a nice guy, but you can tell he just wasn't a push He wasn't somebody that you would want to, you know, get in a fight with. Because you were going to probably lose. But he's a nice guy. And he'd been there for probably 30 years, a long time. I said, hey, how's it going? Called him by his name, of course. Not good. Is it here or is it home? I'm a minister, guys. I'm, you know, when something comes up, I've got to, you know, plow into it. There was a hurt there. And that's what I do. That's the vessel God created me to be, to encourage people, to bring them out of that, that hopelessness and that hurt. So, this was his story. He worked retailer. He was a retailer. And he didn't want, because he's around so many people, he didn't want to bring it around his family. So his, he had a brother that lived close to him, fairly close. And he hadn't been over there in a month. His brother had died sometime during that month of a heart attack, massive heart attack. It was apparently living by himself and we found him man he was real livid guys he was like man i'm tired of this covid garbage i could have got hit by a car walking out the door you get the point he said i didn't even get to say bye to my brother how much he means to me how much he loves me man i know people that have had to loved ones that were parents that had little, little kid that had kids 12, 13 years old, and they died last summer. They just now had their funeral a month or two ago because of all this. People's businesses are folding. But yet some of these major companies are having record-breaking years. Why? Because they're supporting these lies. Time to quit supporting them, guys. Cut, cut, the, cut the plug. I did. And there's one of the major retailers I don't even shop at anymore. I avoid it like the plague. Because I see the spirit behind it. I don't wear a mask because of the spirit that's behind it. It has nothing to do with that I want people to get sick. Nothing to do with that I don't think the disease is real. I'm from Missouri, guys. Not really. But I can prove it. I just had to have my part of my toe removed. A very small piece of my toe. And it's, it was a very complicated two-week-long process. And three weeks in emergency. Three different emergency rooms. And two weeks in the hospital. <clears throat> But on the natural side of it, they should have cut my whole leg off right below the hip. And every emergency room I went in said, man, it's an emergency. You're going to die. So I was in there for two weeks, guys. Ground zero. Couldn't even get out of bed because they had alarms on my bed. Man, I couldn't even, you know, I was stuck there. But I saw a lot of, I didn't wear a mask the whole time, guys. And I asked a lot of questions. And yes, the hospital was full, full of sick people. In the emergency room, there's, you know, half of them were, had COVID, but there was also a lot of other sick people. There's a lot of people that are dying from a lot of different things, guys. That's just one of the diseases that's running through the land. So why did we 
amp it up into a weapon so they can control the money and the flow and the power. A handful. Honestly, God, a handful. Man, they're, you know, idiots is not a good word for them. That, that's, that's a nice word for them. They're evil in their heart. Lies and deceit. Every time you turn around, you can't say anything to anybody. You can't even bring up the word. But the news media can blast it out. The news media can say COVID, 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 and it's, it's gone rampant, and it's, you know, it's, it's a rabies dog or whatever. You say it, and they pull the plug on you. You need medical misinformation or whatever. Garbage. That's why I'm saying there's got to be a shift in the spirit, guys. We've let sin in. And we've just ignored it and compromised. And then when it when it manifested and blew up in our face, the election is just a big is a big part of it, but it's a piece of it. All that's all it is. It's Trump isn't going to win the day, and neither is Biden. Jesus is God. Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. So get over yourselves is right. It's time to repent and turn to the Lord. If we were that big super powerhouse and we just could, you know, kick the doors of hell wide open and bust it, take the keys of hell, death, and the grave like Jesus did. Why did one virus knock us out, wipe us out? Because we were powerless, because we weren't connected to the vine. That's what I'm going to end with, guys, okay? The, one of the last doctors I talked to was an infectious doctor, you know, that deals with all the infections. He explained to me what they did. Okay, they cut he, the first doctor wanted to cut everything off, literally. No, get the infection first is what I told them, and they were mad. And they were mad when I left the first hospital. Second, I left two hospitals actually. They were mad because you leave against medical advice, and they're like, "You're gonna die." Blah 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 blah. blah. No, get the infection first because all you can do is shove it, and push it around, and that's what we're doing. We're just pushing it in different different areas and different things. It, the news media, it's the election, it's this, it's that. The infection is sin, guys. And it's destroying us as a nation and as a people and as a, even in the world. And one of the biggest sins, I'm not saying there's big sins and there's little sins, but one of the sins is the abortion issue, guys, because we're murdering our unborn children. And that lets us, that starts us in a spirit of how we treat others. We don't care. As long as we get, you know, as long as our payday's there and as long as our 401k is fine and as long as I got a job and I got mine, well, I'm sorry you don't have yours. Sorry you're homeless. So sorry you're getting kicked out of your apartment. I'm sorry your business folded. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. You better start repenting, guys. Praying and listening. What's the Spirit saying to you? What's God telling you to do? There's a shift coming, guys. Start listening to what other ministers are saying. We got to get over ourselves, too. Ministers do, too. And just preach the truth. What's God telling you? Pray about it before you start spitting it out. This was several days of prayer into this one. But the Lord told me to get this out this morning before I go, before I go take care of some stuff that I've got to do and just a couple of meetings I got to places I got to be. And I'll finish some of it this afternoon. This is not business as usual, guys. Today's the day. I don't know what's going to happen. Some things are either starting, processing, brewing. I call it the God cookery. Something's going on in the spirit, and we need to usher it in. It might be today. It might be six months from now. It might have absolutely nothing to do with the election. It might. I don't know. It has everything to do with God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, His Word. Can you hear me now? That's what God's saying. Tried to get our attention with the COVID. He tried to get our attention with the election. He's trying to get our attention with the lies, with the media, with the with the censorship, with all the just draconian rules and regulations. One of my friends put out, man, if there's that much 
you know, political upheaval, fraud, whatever you want to call it, deception in the presidential election. Can you imagine what's in the in your states, even down to the mayors? I'm not saying everybody's bad and evil, but what I'm saying is evil been been pushed to the hilt, and it's time we get it out of our land. I'm coming from, from the preacher Christian point. Of course, absolutely. 40 years in the making, though, guys. Prodigal son. And you know what? When I was a prodigal son, I used to preach his message at the homeless shelter. I lost everything, guys. I'm talking everything in the mid-90s. I mean everything, including I thought I was going to die. Literally. More than once, all the time. Pretty bad. And I lost everything I had. I'll leave it at that, the details. And I was so mad at God. Now my wife said, you weren't mad at God. No, I, I was furious at him. You can't be a good God. And all this happened. I didn't, didn't come through it like Job. More like Jonah. <sighs> or even Gideon. Or any, you know, or, or more like Peter. I've had some experiences, guys, and so I can stand on those. They become landmarks for me. I know what God can do. I've had a Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego moment more than once in the health area. More than once. But what I'm saying is this moment in time that we're living in seems surreal. But it's real, and it's spiritual. It's not an awakening. It's a time to repent. It's a time to listen. It's a time to open your ears, your spiritual ears. It's a time to seek Him like never before. It's a time to weep and pray between the porch and the altar. Imperative, guys. Instead of running frantic to the White House and barking on the steps of the courthouses or whatever, you know, I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. That's not what I'm saying, so don't get that wrong. If that's what God told you to do, then do it. By all means, I'm not God. I'm not Jesus. I'm not the Holy Ghost. I'm not His Word. He stands true to Himself. What I'm saying is, you got to. This is going to be birthed in prayer, repentance, and prayer, cleaning the deck. And it's not just I'll repent, change your mind. Oh, okay, well I change my mind. Okay, so I'm going to go a different. Man, that's a lame excuse for cleaning your heart. It really is. Church has got us to accept that, the watered-down gospel. Repent is repent. Dig it out, uproot it, clean it. One of my messages, God doesn't want your wealth and fame. He wants your guilt and shame. He wants those dirty, ugly places you won't even go in your heart. You've locked them up, closed them up to everybody around you, including yourself. You won't even go there. It's so ugly and dirty and nasty. And not, I'm not talking about just filthy. I'm talking about sin from within. All of us, guys. Me too. This is not you do this and I, I get to do, I get a free pass. No free passes, guys. This is not the game of Monopoly. I'm not going to pass. Go and collect 200 bucks and laugh at you guys on my way to the bank. I got to do the exact same thing. I got to get a hold of God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. I gotta listen too. I gotta clean up myself too. I gotta repent myself too. I gotta lay my altar of stuff that's not from God too. I gotta clean house too. One of my messages, the one about clean, he doesn't want to clean the white house. He wants to clean our house. Guys, there's so much to it. I love you. I gotta go because my ride is probably here. Um, one of my contacts. So, love you guys. Talk to you soon.